Hello and welcome to Excel-DashboardTemplates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-DashboardTemplates.com so you're sure to get the latest tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything about Excel to make some awesome dashboards. All right, today had a challenge that we posed uh, earlier in the week and it was how to make uh, a bubble chart like you see here. This is a 3D bubble chart. We've got three different products or uh, types of things. We have new product optimization and tech transfer maybe these are projects uh, for our company dashboard and they wanted to show a bubble chart um, with let's say the reward and the probability and uh, here is the chart but what they wanted is they wanted three different colors uh, for the bubbles and they wanted to make this dynamic so we're going to show you how to go about doing that today um, so I presented you with a set of data here's the data that we uh, chose so we've got this X is the reward We've got Y is the probability, and Z was the bubble size. And you can get this file and uh, free template download uh, at my blog at excel-boardtemplates.com. Uh, and so just made up some random data based on the user requirements. They said they had some new product optimization and tech transfer projects. And they wanted to plot the reward and the probability, and they wanted to give them different uh, colors based on the type of project that they are. So now uh, one of our users, Don, sent a, a great thing in and made it real easy. He said, you know, if this was just a one-time chart, I would just sort this. And then when I create my bubble chart, I would only select the data for new product and only the data for optimization and then tech transfer. So and give them all, they would all have separate colors. Uh, as they were added to the chart in a separate sequence. So you would end up creating just a blank chart, then you would go up to, so clicking on the blank chart, you would go up to your uh, design ribbon. So you can see here, you'd go over to select data, and from there he would have created three different, uh, he would have added three different series, and then they would have automatically have different colors. So, but let's assume that this is not a one-time project, and you may paste and uh, copy and paste data, or just type in different data points, and they may be in a random order uh, that you're not going to sort, and you don't have time to sort it, you just want to have it done each time for you. So here we go, here's our data, it's all set up. So we've got the same data here. Now what we want to do is we want to transform this data like you see here into a different table of chart data. So we're going to set up uh, three areas. So we're going to have an area for our new product, we're going to have an area for our optimization, and an area for our tech transfer. Now you'll notice that we only have Y probability and Z the bubble size uh, for each one of these. We don't have an X associated with these. Uh, each uh, one of the folks who sent in a sample, they had X's, Y's, and Z's, um, all three series, um, but uh, you don't actually have to do that because of the way the bubble charts actually um, get created. We just need the X's in one column, and we can do them all in one fell swoop. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so after you set up sort of your range, and you don't even really need these, it's just for our own uh, edification so that we know which each formula represents what. So first, go here into F3. We're just going to hit the equal sign, and this is going to equal our X values. And uh, there you go, and I can copy that down. So now we have all of our X values for all of the series, and this one column will translate to each of the three series. Now, Y, here is where we want to create our conditional formula to create our conditional colored bubble chart. Let's go ahead and hit equal sign. And so since this is the new product one, uh, we're going to do an if statement, and we're going to say if A3, so that's over here in our first column, if the type of project that we're doing, and I'm going to lock that down by hitting F4, and that is an absolute value reference. I'm going to hit F4 again, and that would be if we wanted to lock down the row, but since we're going to be copying um, this down and over, we don't want to lock the row, I'm going to hit F4 one more time. We want to lock the column, so it's always going to look in the A column uh, for this data. We're going to say if that equals, now we're going to say if that equals G1, and this is the cell right up here, um, then we can go ahead and uh, compare, and if it is the new product um, that we're going to do, we want to put in uh, a value. Now, um, since we're going to copy this over as well. We don't want to necessarily lock in uh, the G1 um, 
as a absolute value, but we want it to have partially absolute. So I'm going to hit F4 and F4 again because it's not going to lock down to G. We're just going to lock it down to the row of G of the number one row. And then I'm going to hit my comma. And so if uh, the value in A3 equals the value in G1, then we want to actually go ahead and put in the value of our probability here in C. And we want to hit F4 and lock that down. Once again, we don't want it a fully absolute reference. We'll always be locked down to C3. We want to hit F4 again and lock it down to the column because this column of data is not going to change. But we do want our values to change as I copy this down rows. I'm going to hit the comma. And then we want to use the not applicable function. We need to always put in two parentheses after the not applicable function because if it does not equal new product, then we do not want to show this data point. We don't want to show this bubble. I'm going to go ahead and end my if statement for my parentheses and hit enter. And uh, now we've got our y's all set up. So let's copy that down. And you'll notice uh, for the first two values, it is all set because they are new product. The third value is an NA because that's optimization. The fourth is zero because that was uh, what is in that value for new product once again. So you can see it's conditionally showing different data points. OK, now let's put in the formula for z or the bubble size for our bubble charts. So I'm going to hit equals, and we're going to do an if statement again. I'm going to start my parentheses. Now we just want to do a logical test to say, is an A, and so that is the not applicable, and the value. We want to look at column G3 and see if that is equal to an A, then you know what? Let's just put in another an A here, because we don't want to show this point at all. Else, uh, let's go ahead and put in the value over here in column D. Uh, three, and we're going to also lock that one down to uh, being always being in column D. Hit F4 three times in my parentheses, and we can put that in. Now let's go ahead and copy that down. So you can see it matches. Anytime we have a number, we have a number. Anytime we have an NA, we have NAs. All right, so we've got all of our formulas uh, copied here. We can do Control C on that range, go to our optimization. I uh, hit enter, we can do control C again, and hit enter over here on tech transfer. And so you will see anytime uh, it is new product, the first two are uh, coming up as numbers. Anytime it's optimization, the second one are coming up. And then anytime it's tech transfer, uh, our third one, which is going to be our green series, is going to come up. All right, now uh, here's the last uh, few tricks. We just can go ahead and create our bubble chart. And I found the easiest way to do this is just highlight the data. So I'm highlighting my chart data range from F3 to L12. I'm going to go up to my insert ribbon. And then from my insert ribbon, I am going to go to other charts in my chart group. And right here, you see we have a bubble chart. In this case, we're going to do a 3D effect. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, here. And so as you can see, um, what we have is we now have our bubble chart based on those new series. Now, the only uh, couple of issues that we have with our bubble chart is it's very difficult to get these series names to be the right series uh, within Excel. So the easiest way is to create your chart, then make sure you click on your chart, go up to your design ribbon, and then from your design ribbon, go to the Select Data button. Now, from the Select Data button, what we want to do is we want to just go ahead and click on our first series and hit the Edit button. And um, what we want to do is we already have our series names, and we can lock these down wherever we want. Uh, in my case, let me cancel back out of this so you can see I actually kind of hid them in my chart. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on the chart, go up to my Select Data button again. I'm going to edit that series. And so my first series name we said was new product. So I'm just going to lock it in on cell G1 and click OK. I'm going to go to my second series, edit. That's optimization. And my third series edit is tech transfer. There you go. And so uh, when I click on OK out here, look at this. You can see the chart now has uh, our series name. So we know what is blue, what is red is optimization, and green is tech transfer. Now, once we seem to do that, you'll notice that the horizontal 
axis has changed from minus two to minus from minus two to minus two to minus two on the vertical and minus five. Don't know why Excel is resetting this all of a sudden. Must be it's just trying to uh, center it. I'm not sure, but you can click on the horizontal axis. I'm gonna press my Control One key, and from here I'm gonna change my minimum to go from minus five. I'm actually gonna just go ahead and make that zero right now. Click on close and. Uh, there you have it. You've got a way to create a uh, bubble chart um, within Excel that is conditional uh, on the colors that it's going to choose. And um, you can do that with the NA or not applicable formula uh, wrapped in an if statement. So pretty simple and easy, but that's uh, something that kind of throws people when creating an Excel dashboard using bubble charts. They want different colors. They don't know how to do it in a set of data. And uh, always, uh, one of my first choices is to use a formula. But Don had a great suggestion. You can just sort this data and uh, go ahead and make your bubble charts from each one of those sections. All right, hopefully you learned something new here today. Please make sure you subscribe to my video channel so that you're sure to get the latest posts delivered directly to your inbox. And also, if you want step-by-step -step tutorials or a free file download, please visit excel-dashboardtemplates.com and look up this bubble chart tutorial. Thank you.